Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. And as you might have noticed, there are a lot of new devices coming out with Linux running by default. New computers, new smartphones, new tablets, new smartwatches. There is a huge uptick in build quality, in the quality of the distributions that are shipping on them and in the interest that they seem to generate. So I think it's time we take a tour of what's new and how this kind of gives me hardware lust. So let's start. This video is sponsored by Lino. Linode provides Linux servers that make it super easy and affordable to host your own app, website or service right in the cloud. The interface is really easy to use and you can start your own server in just a few clicks. The best part is the one-click apps. Linode has a lot of services you can install on your server with just a click, like OpenVPN. Unlike third-party VPN services, using Linode and the one-click OpenVPN app allows you to keep total control of your data, privacy and security. For $5 a month, you can use Linode to host your own VPN and be certain that all your data is in your hands. Sign up for your free account today and get a $20 credit, which amounts to 4 months of free VPN, just by clicking the link in the description. Now the first question is, what new hardware? Well, there are a ton of new devices. The first ones are mainly computers. They are the new Tuxedo Manjaro computers, which are completely focused on customization. You can change the color, you can change the keyboard layout, you can tweak the look of the super key, you can change a lot of things. And while it's not really known what kind of hardware will ship in them, they look like pretty powerful machines. Then there's the Kubuntu Focus, a super high powered laptop mainly aimed at gamers and creatives, which is kind of insane if you think about it, because Linux gamers, Linux creatives, we're living in exciting times. And this computer can be spec to the max, it's pretty costly, and although the distribution the customizations they, they brought to it don't really appeal to me, this machine looks insanely powerful and really great for editing or gaming on the go. Then there's what System76 is doing with their laptops and desktops. Their Thelio line looks amazing. The case, the design, the build quality looks incredible and yes, they might be a little bit costly, but they look awesome. They recently announced a few new colors. Uh, the wood is actually tinted, red, blue, black. They look super good and I cannot wait for them to ship to France and Europe so I can buy one. They are also working apparently on one of their own custom designed laptops because System76 already sells laptops, but they're mainly just reselling uh, rebranded versions of existing machines and now they're going to start designing their own. It's going to take a few years, but I'm really excited to see what they can do with that. Then there's what the Pine64 is doing with ARM computing. They are really, really affordable machines and kind of high powered as well. You've got uh, the Pinebook Pro, the Pinebook, You've got the Pine Tab, you've got obviously the Pine Phone, the Pine Time, which is a smartwatch. They are really expanding ARM-based computing everywhere and it's starting to get a lot of attention and get developers excited. You can get Manjaro running on that and it looks super smooth. The build quality is incredible for the price. This is really exciting stuff. And obviously there are a lot of other Linux hardware makers. You've got Zarizen, you've got Entroware, uh, You've got Juno computers and you even have some big names like Dell which are shipping their whole XPS line running on Ubuntu. Now if you're looking at this closer, you'll notice a trend. The specs are getting better. We're getting farther and farther away from the small little boxes and the crappy little laptops like the netbooks that were running Xandros. We're, we're getting farther and farther away from that and we're getting some very powerful machines now. The Thelio Major is running a massive Threadripper processor and it is destroying everything the competition has to offer in terms of performance and that's a super exciting CPU. Then you get the Kubuntu Focus which is running on Intel but can ship with Nvidia RTX graphics and 32 gigabytes of RAM for a laptop. Like these machines are getting more powerful every day and even the entry level ones now run super high powered Intel processors as well which is really good. So it's great that Linux computers are not restricted to Intel based hardware, lower core graphics and mainly just lower powered computers and machines. Now these machines are still available obviously and it's great because there's now a huge range of machines available for every price point and every need. And this means that Linux desktop as it is, is starting to grow and attract more people because if companies produce these machines is that they think that there is a market and I'm pretty sure there is one. I also think the rise of Linux gaming with Proton in the last year and a half, maybe last two years, really brought back this, uh, this will to have more power on our computers and more better graphics card, better driver support and better machines in general, which is really fantastic. And I think we're seeing the market rise up to that demand. 
Now, my second observation is that Linux devices are really starting to expand to more markets. And you get the Librem 5 and the Pine Phone, which are great smartphones in their own right. And sure, we're expanding to smartphones. We're getting that like 12 years too late. And we're never going to crush Android or iOS. If Windows Phone couldn't do it, we probably don't have the means or the marketing means to make that happen. But still, we're seeing good efforts there. And the interest that developers are showing is really, really good. Like they are rising up to the challenge and developing interesting desktop environments like GNOME is ported with Fosh, uh, the phone shell. Uh, you've got the Plasma mobile efforts. You've got Sailfish, which is also running Android apps, as I understand it. You've got UB ports, the X Ubuntu Touch, which is really gaining a lot of more following since the Pi phone released. There's a lot of interest there. And then you've got what the Pine 64 is doing with the Pine tab and the Pine time, which are tablets and smartwatches. So sure, they're only dev kits for now and they're not meant for general consumption. But still, we are seeing Linux expand to more device markets and it's really nice. Now, you could ask, why would you want to buy a machine running Linux by default? I mean, we can go into any store, buy a computer, install Linux on it, and it's going to work 99% of the time. So what's the point of having manufacturers releasing Linux powered devices out of the box? Well, the first thing is it helps support the Linux ecosystem. Like if we show these people that there is interest in buying these machines, obviously they're going to make more and they're going to be more available to other people and it's going to help expand the reach of desktop Linux. But there is an issue with that. Uh, these machines are usually sold at a higher markup and that's understandable. They're not ma as mass produced as bigger manufacturers, bigger OEMs. So yes, they are going to be more expensive. Like the Thelio line is looking amazing. They're great computers, but they are Apple price devices. And then there's the Librem 13, which is a privacy focused laptop, which has hardware kill switches, greatly designed, uh, super powerful for what you get, but it's pretty expensive. Like it's like two or three hundred dollars more than my MateBook Pro, and it's less powerful than this one. So is supporting Linux hardware manufacturers really worth the markup that you have to pay on these machines? Well, my opinion is yes, but yours might differ. And then there's a second point, there's a second advantage to buying these machines is that you know that they will be compatible with Linux. So when you pick up one of these machines, you want them to work out of the box. When you plug in a USB key to test drive a live USB, when you reinstall your distro, when you restore, when you restore backups, you want everything to work out of the box. You don't want to waste time reinstalling crappy drivers that will work once in a while. You want them to work and buying a Linux powered machine out of the box will guarantee that. And this brings me to my hardware lust. I already have all the hardware I need. I have a powerful desktop computer running a Ryzen 5 2600, an RTX 2060, 16 gigabytes of RAM, an SSD. I've got a nice laptop in the look of the MateBook Pro, which is a beautiful 13 inch laptop with a great keyboard, great trackpad, pretty powerful, lacking a great graphics card, but really all in one, a great work performer. I have the Pine phone. I already have an Android tablet and a beautiful Samsung S10e, which works really well. I have a smartwatch, uh, the uh, Galaxy S uh, Active, something like that, Galaxy Watch Active maybe. I have all the hardware I need, I don't need anymore. But seeing these computers, man, this is giving me hardware lust. And there is no real way to resist this lust, like yeah, I can store it in the back of my mind and not think about it for days, but it's gonna come back every time I see an article about a new Linux computer. And I'm just a little push away from grabbing something, like anything that would satiate this hardware lust. And my minimalist core is screaming at me. It's telling me like, no, you don't need that. You've got all you need. You can try to rationalize that purchase all you want. You don't need that. What you need to buy for the channel, for example, is softboxes to get better lighting. You need to buy better microphones to replace the Blue Yeti, which is good, but picks up a lot of echo. You need to buy some, uh, some paneling for your office so the echo is not reverberating as much. There's a lot of things that you need to buy before you buy a new computer, but still, like seeing those red, blues and black Thelios, that just got my heart racing and Jesus, are you not excited to see those machines? Are you not excited to see great design and great power coming to Linux? I know I am. Um, and that's about it for this uh, little video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't hesitate to like, subscribe and turn on notifications. And if you really did like the video, I have a Patreon page. I'll leave a link in the description below. I'm going to rework the perks, so stay tuned for that as well. Now, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.